Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Brawler on the Brain for another week. Jared was here a moment ago in the pre-show, but uh, when I played the intro music, he's just disappeared. No, wait, here you are now. Where'd you go, Jared? I'm here as soon as the music started playing, mate. I, I thought you'd done that on purpose. What? Yeah, I just disappeared. The, the whole no. Page no, no, no. That that was <laughs> a tech issue on your end. On my end. All yeah, right. I'll cop that. I'm here now. How are we going, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, how's your past week been? Yeah, busy, eventful. Um, yeah, just keeps rolling, mate. Yeah. Uh, so we're we're back broadcasting on the Unshackled YouTube channel this week. Of course, we're simulcasting on your YouTube channel now. It's the the first of March today, which is the beginning of autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. It also marks one year since the 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 great toilet paper panic uh, began, which uh, by the end of March 2020, we were under house arrest. So I bought a cake uh, to commemorate the, the the one year of the, the March madness beginning. Well done. Well done. Well, I was stocked up well before then. I didn't wait for March before I, uh, before I stocked up. I knew that was coming. But yeah. Well, you, you knew that there'd be some sort of doomsday of some sort. I I did. I actually believed in COVID at the start. I was uh, I was one of them people who I found out early, like January or something that, that year, and, and was telling everybody that COVID was real and that everybody was going to die. And, and I started, you know, stockpiling food and, and all that sort of shit. But uh, I worked out pretty quickly that I was wrong. And then, yeah. How, how did you work out that it was fake in your, in your view? Oh, to be honest, well, what happened is at, at the start, the news was sort of covering it up. So it was big in China and it was starting to, to leak over here, but the, the news was making out like it wasn't a big thing. So because... Oh, uh, the news... they, 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 they were. Uh, because remember those propaganda videos that were coming out of China where apparently people with COVID were just dropping dead on the streets and like convulsing, dying painful deaths? That was after. So I'm talking December, January, before before anything anything was released here at all. And the first thing that, like, it, it was making news in China and other countries, but it wasn't making news in Australia. And due to the fact that it wasn't making any news here, I assumed it was bad. Uh, and as soon as, as the media picked it up and ran with it, I started to look into it a bit more and, and it started to unravel pretty quickly. But, uh, but yeah, I definitely wasn't made a point. To be honest, I even went out in a fucking mask and a hazmat suit and raided the local store with my brother, freaking out the world was going to end. My dad is major in conspiracy theories, and he convinced me that uh, the, the world was ending. So, yeah, it, uh, it didn't last too long, that couple of weeks, and we were back on track. So you operate uh, uh, sort of on the wavelength of me, that if the media is hyping something up, it's, uh, it's most likely uh, a beat-up, fake but if they're downplaying something that's when you need to be alarmed basically yeah i i, I don't think they tell us anything that's real so uh, yeah i'm very uh very skeptical when i when i see them push an agenda very very strongly well the mainstream media have had a well, good year scaring the the crap out of the the global population and and one year on uh, we're still living under well, every state and territory in Australia are a state of emergency. Yeah, well, they've made a fortune out of it. They've made billions of dollars and they have no Some plan people on... have. They, well, uh, many chosen... millions of Australians have, have lost massively. No, the chosen... No, we've all made, lost massively. The chosen... Um, well, and I, I don't think that they're going... Well, we know they're not going to stop it. It, it continues from here. We, we say it's getting worse, you know. But, mm. you know... Starting to uh, to fight back against these vaccines, which is amazing to see. The uh, you know countries are, are banning the vaccines, the Pfizer vaccines, and others. You know, left, right, and centre. So, you, you know, there is some encouraging signs. Well, it's week two of the the vaccine rollout in Australia, and it it hit its first uh, bump last week with that uh, doctor in Brisbane administering four, uh, four 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 times the the dose to two elderly residents an 88 year old man and 94 year old woman but apparently they're they're okay now that's good to know i'm sure <laughs> i wonder if they feel like you know is that is that what they said or was that someone speaking for them 
for no, the that was that, that that was what the uh, Greg Hunt, the health minister, said, and the the deputy acting chief medical officer, Michael Kidd. Yeah, maybe we should try to interview them and see how they feel. That would that you know that would be you know more probable if, if they said they felt all right. I, I believe that, but yeah. I don't know, four times the, the, the dose, you've seen some of the effects. Well, it's, it's, I, I'm amazed that they're, they're the reports, that they're, they're, they're doing okay even, because that's a pretty big overdose. Mm. So in light of all this recent news of what's going on, have you changed your opinion on the vaccine? Or are you still for the, the, the which one, which, whichever one you chose to go through? Oh, I, I'm leaning uh, towards the AstraZeneca one being the, the least worst. Uh, though apparently there, there's two new vaccines which are on the verge of uh, be, uh, being approved, which is the, well, the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that got uh, emergency uh, approval by the, the US FDA, and then there's the, the Novavax vaccine. Not Johnson & Johnson like the baby people, surely. Yeah. Really? They make vaccines too? They make yes. baby and vaccines. Isn't that fucking suspect right there? You know, all that and stuff bath is fucking horrible for you. you know we shouldn't put any of that on the skin i i wouldn't be taking anything by johnson and johnson because they had to pay millions in a in a class action uh because uh, to uh 2.6 million to three women at the center of a class action on pelvic mesh implants uh, so if we go for, uh, further down here at the time it was found that johnson johnson affiliated companies in switzerland engaged in negligent conduct, misleading patients and doctors about the safety and efficacy of nine mesh products. The risks were known, not insignificant, and Ethicon's own admission serious harm could ensure if they eventuated a more cautious approach was warranted that the respondents took. So if we go... Mate, so you, if we go you, you are amazing. I don't believe you know... You know how, how did you have that sitting right there? Oh, because this was big news uh, back uh, when was this? Uh, this was only March last year. <laughs> only? So you had it sitting right there from March last year, just waiting for us. Well, because it was a big story because, yeah, these, the these, they, they, these uh, women were, were quite uh, crippled by this uh, pelvic mesh. Yeah, they're known for fucking, like, Johnson & Johnson is the premium brand when it comes to baby bullshit. You know, when it, like when it comes to things to put on their skin and, and all that. So, well, it used to be. No, well, yes. so, so, so are you still learning towards that vaccine then? You, you Not the Johnson and Johnson one. It's uh, well, it's, uh, it, 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 it's only got uh, I think emergency approval from the the US at the moment. Ah, so the 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 one here, you still you still. Think it may the, be the, the, the Oxford AstraZeneca one. Well, that's the – see, I'm operating by your um, uh, uh, your wavelength that it, the pro-vaxxers are attacking the AstraZeneca one, claiming that, oh, it's only got 60%, 70% ef uh, efficiency and it's got to have two doses. Uh, the Pfizer one has 90%. They're, that's the one we should be promoting. So if they're, if they're criticising the AstraZeneca one – then that and they're not talking about any side effects like that's not part of their criticism because they're pro vaxxers then it must be like not that bad you see where i'm coming yeah. from yeah but that, that oh, that's not the same wavelength to me my wavelength is they're trying to fucking kill everybody you know they want to reduce the world's population but they don't don't you take into account that the the the, the pro vaxxers those who well they 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 who say well inject me whatever now are saying oh we shouldn't be th th this vaccine is 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 not that effective like the fact that it's being attacked from the uh the people who want everyone uh, jabbed immediately yeah but the, haven't they didn't they start with 90 percent and then go to 80 percent effective and then 70 percent effective no no the fi that, that that no the pfizer one was already claimed 90 percent effective the astrazeneca one has always been they've claimed 60 70 percent yeah but it's 60 or 70 percent still for a disease that doesn't even send you to hospital like you know why would you get a vaccine for it oh, i don't think vaccines are the problem i think vaccines obviously started you, you know in a good way and they have cured a lot of things but 
what they piggyback into the vaccines. And so you've seen the ingredients. Surely you've seen fucking ingredients. They have embryonic DNA from a child that died in the 60s that they just keep fucking... Yes, I do know that, yes. I, you know, why would they try to put these things in, into our body? You, you know, they're trying to dehumanise us. They, they're putting in chimpanzee DNA and jellyfish DNA. You, you know, that's, that, that's, I don't know about God and all that, but that's dehumanising us, detaching whatever connection we may have with whatever spiritual fucking force may be out there. You, you know, I think it's bad news, man. I don't think there's, you know, there's no case to make that, that makes it worth the risk. It's not that dangerous a disease if it is a, is a disease. I've put Logan's comment on the on the screen. The police crackdown on anti-vax protesters doesn't disprove the anti-vax claim. When you silence someone, you're proving them wrong. You're just scared of what they have to say. Well, the the so-called anti-vax protests, there were two of them outside Greg Hunt's office in, in Somerville, which is uh, just down the road uh, from where I live in the southeastern suburbs of, of Melbourne. There was a, a protest against the 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 push to make the the vaccines mandatory there was one on friday uh, organized by uh theresa van lyshot and then there was another one on saturday organized by reignite democracy australia which was uh, more heavily attended and uh, had more mainstream media coverage there so monica smith and morgan jonas are the the organizers of that and on the on the sunday this was the, the, the front of the herald sun anti-vax war police target protesters to, to safeguard rollout. And this is not the Victoria police. This is apparently the, the Australian Federal Police. And this is how, uh, if I thought I put it up here, uh, Nine News, uh, this, this is how they uh, span the, the new uh, AFP task force. So they were, I, I think they were there on Saturday as well. So when was everyone kettled? Was that Friday or Saturday? Uh, no, no, no. There was no the the, the 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 police on Friday and Saturday. They simply guarded Greg Hunt's office, set up a perimeter around there. The kettling was the week before the Millions March against mandatory vaccinations, or should I say, attempted kettling. But it's worth pointing out that because. The, the the protests the past weekend outside Greg Hunt's office were in the, the southeast of Melbourne. It was out of uh, Luke Cornelius's uh, Chief Wiggum's uh, jurisdiction because he's Northwest Metro Operations Manager, which takes in the the, the CBD. And well, he's made his feelings known about uh, batshit crazy tinfoil hat uh, brigade uh, protesters. So uh, I'm not surprised that uh, the police were much more restrained. Uh, outside of his uh, command. Really, there you go. Well, I didn't know that either. You're full of useful information. So yes, where is but, the one on the 20 being held, do you know? Uh, that's being held at Flagstaff Gardens, which is in the CBD. So I suspect that Victoria Police will probably be a bit more aggressive then. Well, I'll be there. We'll be Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be that one for sure. Yeah. yeah. So here's Nine News talking about the, the, the AFP uh, anti-vax task force. Good morning, Sophie. Well, it does seem that the anti-vaccination movement here in Australia is growing. The federal government has appointed a special project team and they're keeping a very close eye on chatter that's going on online. And it seems that that chatter is skyrocketing. They're monitoring comments and interactions. Anybody who uh, seems to be against the COVID-19 vaccination. Previously, those interactions were about 200 a day. They've now jumped to 6,000 thousand comments and interactions every day that has got authorities on edge but they are keeping a very close eye on things last weekend in melbourne we had a protest yesterday there was a peaceful protest outside greg hunt's office some of those protesters claim that the vaccination actually alters people's dna let's now hear from one of those protesters border closures and mandatory masks and now all this talk about a mandatory vaccine. He only cares about advancing his career and advancing the corporate interests of the pharmaceutical corporations. Just about basically informed consent. There was some suggestion that the federal government would make the vaccination mandatory for all Australians. However, that could only be the case if people want to travel overseas. Oh, Jared's gone again. Why does he disappear every time that I play a clip? I'm sure I'll be back in a moment. But anyway, I've opened up the, the Sunday Herald Sun to, to show you the 
uh, the expo expose they they did on the uh, the protesters. So I'm holding that up as best I can. So they profiled Monica Schmidt, Morgan Jonas, uh, Peter Little, and also Matt Lawson. Here's here's Jared back. What's going on, Jared? Why do you disappear whenever I play a clip? No, it's something to do with the video. When you play the video, it seems to freeze up. But oh, again, it's on, it's on your end. Uh, I don't know. These are these ASIO problems that we seem to have all the time. It only ever happens when I'm with you. So, you know, if I, if I look at the common denominator, it is definitely you. Okay. Well, let's play what uh, Greg Hunt said on the Sunday when uh, the, the story about this uh, anti-vax AFP task force uh, was broken. And we'll see if you disappear again. On the negative oh, side, back if I do. Um, there are those that are peddling, frankly, false myths. Those that are peddling false myths. And so uh, there has been a myth-busting unit uh, that was actually quietly set up within Home Affairs uh, during the course of uh, 2020 in cooperation with the Health Department. Uh, where information is uh, uh, found that's just plainly ridiculous, whether it's 5G theories or, uh, or other things, uh, we put out the information. We'll do it directly to the media, but we'll also make sure that information is available publicly. We don't want to give too much air to uh, you know, uh, some of the silliest ideas, but we do want to provide public reassurance to combat in the uh, marketplace those uh, ideas which uh, would in any way falsely uh, have some impact on public confidence. It's part of our job. It's what we're doing. All up, we're committed to the rollout and we're amazed at the response of Australians and, uh, again, delighted. 300,000 AstraZeneca doses arriving today on a day when there are zero cases of community transmission. Oh, so, you didn't go away that time. No. So, Tim, taking, the, uh, taking your view of the vaccine from a, a smaller perspective of just their demoralising one or demonising one vaccine and looking at the whole picture. Can't you see that it's the agendas against people that are anti-vax or considered anti-vax in general? The yes, period. People who, they, they, they're trying to blur the lines between like lump people who are against mandatory vaccinations or or this what it, uh, mandatory by stealth because it's being promoted by greg hunt and scott morrison as free and voluntary but we've seen all the reports that you won't be allowed to travel overseas unless you're vaccinated or go into certain venues or work in certain places unless you have the the, the vaccine and of course uh, the, the the vaccination passports tying it into the uh the contact tracing QR codes. So even though it'll be, this is what uh, pe uh, people are, I think, uh, rightly concerned about based on these reports that'll be mandatory by, by stealth. There'll be a lot of exclusion from people who voluntarily choose not to take the vaccine. Yeah, and doesn't that there give you enough evidence to reevaluate your, your stance? I, I am I am I'm <laughs> purely uh, I'm purely stating my opinion on the uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine and also in this reality as well that say if like so many life opportunities are cut off because it, 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 because I don't want to get the vaccine but if I have a choice about which vaccine I'm going to take I'm going to take the one which seems to uh, have the least amount of, of side effects. All right. Well, as long as you're not the first one in line, I will <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not going to be. Like, we'll be able to wait and see how, how these we're, other... we're, we're we're at the at the, the the back of the voluntary queue. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, so. Do you know how many they've actually rolled out in Australia? Then, if they've been doing it for two weeks, how many vaccines have they given out? Uh, I can I can look that up because uh, the the. the the federal government health department has a, a vaccine rollout uh, infographic i'll yeah. just bring it up now because i know they were starting obviously with nursing homes and you know nursing home workers visitors yeah front 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 line workers it's only for uh, aged care workers and residents at the moment been very quiet on the news i mean i don't watch the news but i haven't seen much about you know oh here we go here <laughs> Got the inf got the information here. So, a uh, vaccinations ten thousand in New South Wales, three uh, nearly four thousand in Victoria, two thousand in Queensland, 
3,000 in WA, 1,600 in SA, uh, Tasmania, 1,100, NT, ACT, uh, negligible there. Yeah, 33,000. Mm. A total dose of delivered, 63,000, yeah. Yeah, so very, very early days. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to watch, and it'll be funny how much uh, coverage, you, you know, we get when it comes to negative side effects. So we don't have a, a much of, as much of a, a media here in Australia to uh, to put that information forward. You know, so it's come out a lot in you know, America and other countries, but here we seem to to basically cover up a lot of our shit. It's very quiet. So. Well, as I said, like it's 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 only the, the 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 first week of the vaccine rollout. This is the the second week, so. Uh, well, let's go on to the big news of the day. Tom Sewell, what happened? Uh, so, apparently, there I, was a. Yeah, a, a I've seen a video of him punching someone, but I didn't. I didn't yeah. catch the day. Yeah, so there was going to be a, a current affair story tonight, which did air tonight, uh, uh, an expose on the, the National Socialist Network, which Tom Saul is a leader of. They organised that uh, uh, hiking trip in the, the Grampians where they uh, did the, the Hitler salutes and, and burnt, the, burnt the cross, Alex, the Ku Klux Klan, and did that photo where they're, where they're in front of the, the burning cross with their... Uh, ninja uh, ninja outfits on but their shirts exposed so tom okay. saw was Wait, up stop there for one sec stop, stop there did i i only briefly looked at that but i think i noticed that not one bloke had a tattoo or you know that the ones that were showing their shirts yes or well, showing their not chest one, yes not one tattoo. that's amazing in this day and age that's amazing yeah i don't know many people that could take that photo well, but perhaps they 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 chose the the non tattooed ones because their their tattoos might reveal their identity. Yeah. Well, again, if you have to uh, hide your identity for things you're doing, maybe you should reevaluate what you're doing. Yeah. So uh, Tom was upset that he wasn't interviewed for a story that was about his organisation. So he decided to go to. Uh, Channel 9 to confront them, and this is what uh, ended up transpiring this afternoon. Come on, both of you. We are walking outside. And you got to go past the green line? Okay. Now security has decided to forcibly remove us and in fact try and touch our property. He's coming out again. I see it, bro. Past the adrenal line. You feel past the adrenal line. I don't care what, what you do. Which line is that? Past that adrenal line right over there. That white line? You go down Phil. Not you. All right? Yeah, so now he's acting like dance, monkey. monkey. Dance. Watch yourself, bro. Right, like I'm not a dance monkey. Watch yourself. You fucking touch me. Guys, guys, right. Get away. 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 Get Tom did, uh, as as you can see, that was filmed by his unidentified cameraman there, and there, there there's some sort of shoving between the cameraman and the African security guard, and then Tom just full on punches him a few times in the in, in the face, which is that's a pretty full on reaction. You disappeared again, Jared. I just offered my uh, reaction to it. What's yours? Yeah, what yours though? So I seen the video, but I didn't get to hear what he said. I concluded it was pretty bad what Tom did. Doesn't look 
great. I couldn't I couldn't hear what was said. I'm going to have to rewatch it later. Look, it was a nice cross. It wasn't bad. He cupped him behind the neck and he, he clocked him straight. It was a it was a nice cross. I'll give him that. Well, but, you're 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 yeah, obsessing assessing it from like a, a fighting technique, which is not the context there. This was not some sort of like. No, Fight but in the gym. Context, like, I'm just just gauging the cross, and that was not that was a fair cross. Uh, the situation doesn't look great, you know what I mean? Like, you, you can't punch security guards out in front of work and get away with it. So I don't think it's going to go very well for him. Um, yeah, and, probably, yeah, and if you're a a self-proclaimed national socialist and you're punching uh, an African man in the in the, in the face, uh, that's that's a hard sell. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a hard sell. Well, especially said, since your, especially since your cameraman pr uh, provoked him by saying uh, "dance monkey" to the security guard. Did did the security guard attack? Like, did the security guard touch anybody first? Or and it, it, it's because he's filming it. There, there, there I looks know. like he, like there was maybe say a push or something in that, but nothing that would justify the, 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 the punches from Tom. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. Look, it's a, it's rough for him. It's yeah, it's rough for the fellow to cop the punches too. It's. I'm glad I'm not involved. Yeah, well, it's as you said, it's it's, it's <laughs> it doesn't look good for Tom, and uh, I, and I, I, kind of you know, like it's. Uh, you know. Yeah, there's the, the there's the extremism in inquiry uh, going on, uh, which is yeah. is due to report. In April, and there's been a lot of scrutiny on the, the the National Socialist Network, and then, well, you film yourself uh, punching an African security guard, and of course, the, the 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 mainstream media is going to say, "Look at this Nazi committing this racially hate, ha hateful crime against a a African security guard simply doing his job." Yeah, yeah, he's definitely in trouble. I think the the courts aren't going to look nicely at that. You know, it's not. You know, I can't. Can, you know, I can't condone it. Really, you know, no one can. You can't punch people for for nothing. You know, if he was attacked, I understand it. But but if he wasn't attacked, well, then you know, what can you do? I mean, like if if someone sh uh, like just shoves your friend, that doesn't justify you punching them several times. Debatable, debatable. Yeah, you know, you have to defend yourself. So we're on different sides of the fence there, Tom. If someone shoves me or my friend, I'm going to smack them, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> regardless of what, that's irrelevant. Uh, but for Tom, you know, going to Channel 9 to confront him about a news story that they're doing and then smacking an African uh, gun, no matter how that plays out, you're not going to take a win there, I don't think. So, yeah, good luck to him. I heard the I, mean, uh, I heard the X X Y Z is running with the uh, what's what's the name of the show? Tom done nothing wrong. I think that's yeah. a hard thing to uh, to push. I think Tom fucked up. Tom fucked up. You, you don't want cameras there for that sort of thing anyway. You, you know that's, that's something. Well, say. he 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 brought his own camera. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's they're definitely going to run with that. That uh, that's going to be news for the next week. Like the like obviously like. Well, it's it's not uncommon for uh, mainstream media to run hit pieces on people and not interview the subject himself. So, like, it's legitimate of Tom to say, "Ask Channel Nine, why don't you interview me in that?" And like, if you like reached out to 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 them to put your side, and they're rejected, well, then you just say, "See, this disproves that this was a a, a hit piece on on me, and they didn't even give me a a, a right to." Reply. So he could have made that point without the the violence. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I assume he went there with that intention in mind, and then obviously things escalated very quickly. I bet. Mm. Uh, I guess in some of his choices now, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know. Maybe maybe he didn't like the fella. <laughs> All I know is that was a fair cross. He's got big. He's a fair. He's got he's a big boy. Uh, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Uh... Obviously, works out uh, a lot. Uh, there was that uh, famous uh, fight between he and Senator Slay. Was it three years ago now? Which he looked like he, he'd improved since then. I watched that fight, and that was that was you know they uh, they both had a pretty bad night. I think they, yeah. So yeah, I think he's been training a bit more from there uh, since then. By the way, he uh, 
you through that. They were straight down the line. Uh. Yeah, so Ivan had the time to, to watch the actual uh, current affair expose itself uh, because I was preparing no, for this show, but I'll, I'll catch up with it on, on Nine now. Yeah, look, I, I don't know much about Tom's politics or anything like that. Uh, very little, to be honest. Um, well, he calls himself a national so socialist and likes Hitler. So yeah, those are yeah. those are those are his his words, not mine. Yeah, and look, to be honest, I don't fully understand national socialism yet. You know, I've I've learned some about it, but yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, Tim, I'm very uh, anti-establishment, so none of that really interests me too much. Anybody who's after, you know, more police powers or more more state powers, I, you know, I'm not for that. Uh, yeah, so that that's not gonna that's not gonna sell with me in any way. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's definitely uh, gonna get himself some attention. Yeah. Well, we'll see what the uh, what the. What do you say? The, the aftermath is uh, how much traction this uh, gains in the mainstream media. Because at the moment, uh, they're all obsessed with the alleged uh, rapes and rapists uh, around Parliament House. I'm not sure if you've been following that. Because uh, it all kicked off, what was it, a, a fortnight ago uh, with that uh, former Liberal staffer, uh, uh, Brittany Higgins, who has alleged that she was raped by a, a staffer in uh, Linda Reynolds' office, who is now the defence minister, a couple of weeks before the 2019 federal election, and this and this former and this uh, uh, colleague of hers, he's uh, he was since dismissed from uh, from his staffing position and worked for a private corporation. He's now admitted himself into some facility. Uh, he's been accused of uh, sexual misconduct by three other women now. But late last week, uh, ABC reporter Louise Milligan said that uh, she had received a, a, a police complaint from a woman who is now deceased who alleges that in 1988 a sitting cabinet minister raped her. And then on Sunday night, a Liberal Senator Sarah Henderson said that she had received a letter uh, from a complainant, which she'd referred to the Australian Federal Police from a woman who claims that she was raped by a, a sitting Labor MP. Yeah, well, it's definitely a, a bit of a culture in there, isn't it? That's uh, it's a lot of claims of, of rape. Everyone suspects that the one that Sarah Henderson uh, brought up, the, the, the sitting Labor MP, that that... Uh, uh, that was a complaint by Kathy Sheriff, who claims that on a Labor youth camp she was raped by Bill Shorten, who was the leader of the opposition. Now, uh, uh, now he's a, a shadow minister. Victoria Police investigated a number of years ago and said there was no case for Shorten to answer. Uh, but as we know, with uh, Victoria Police, uh, they uh, they they tried Cardinal Powell twice uh, for historical child sex convictions got overturned by the, the High Court. Uh, so their judgment on these matters uh, is in question. And uh, Kathy Sheriff, uh, she, uh, she still uh, wants to pursue this, uh, 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 this complaint, even though Victoria Police have rejected it. Yeah, well, look, I remember uh, reading an article about four or five years ago in the Herald Sun, and it was uh, explaining how Victoria was one of the, the best places to live in the world for people convicted of sex crimes. It was one of the most lenient, uh, you know, sentencing sort of places in the world. So, you know, the fact that the, the Victoria Police is overlooking it shows the culture of Victoria Police as well. Yeah, you know, I don't know much about it, and I don't know fucking who most of them people are that you named. Uh, I remember Bill Shorten's thing being swept under the rug, um, but... Yeah, you know, nothing will come of it. I don't think it's you know, it's, there's always allegations of some sort of corruption in Parliament. That you know, I think it's all there to distract us from what's really going on. You know, it's all well, it's, it's consumed the the Canberra Press Gallery, uh, but uh, yeah. they're the biggest uh, protectors of all the uh, shenanigans, including uh, sexual ones 
and well, the the the, the more heinous ones. I mean, they they covered they covered up for six months the fact that Barnaby Joyce, uh, who was then the the national National Party leader and deputy prime minister, was having an affair with his uh, staffer Vicky Campion and got her pregnant. It wasn't until well, the story was actually broken by the the Independent Australian News website late in 2017. Uh, but it wasn't it didn't become a story in the mainstream media until Sherry Markson uh, broke the, uh, the the parliamentary protection racket and published uh, Vicky Campion, uh, uh, Barnaby Joyce's well now partner, uh, originally media advisor, uh, published a photo of her pregnant uh, on the front of the paper. Yeah, and like, like you said, it's all that Cam was uh, talking about at the moment. The fact that, like we were just saying before, the national, you know, it's been two weeks of a national vaccine rollout that's getting fucking basically no media attention. All we're worried about for 12 months is COVID, COVID, COVID. Now, as soon as they start to roll out the vaccine, we're worried about fucking, you know, bullshit in parliament, like, like handle their internal investigations. We should be monitoring it, but straight away they're trying to deviate our attention to something else, you know. It sounds like fucking days of our lives. You know, they're all... Well, you know, they're all sex, so. sex and politics is the most uh, salacious subject. Of course. It, it gets people distracted from what's obviously going on, what's, you know, what else is going on, you know. I thought the, you know, I'd be much more concerned with worrying about how many people are being vaccinated and what reactions they've had. Yeah, you know, why are we worried about what's going on? So you think that this is a smokescreen now while the vaccines are rolling out to cover up anyone who has any side effects? Look here, sex and politics. Dad, look, it, it's definitely a possibility. You know, I'm I'm just spitballing here, but, you know, why have you know why has COVID been the focus of the news for a year? Every fucking thing about COVID. And now when the vaccines start, we're talking about something else. You know, about COVID, you know. <laughs> You, you also will remember that in between the uh, first and second waves of COVID in, in 2020, it was the, 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 uh, the, uh, the George Floyd death triggered Black Lives Matter riots and looting. Yeah, look, they, they always, you know, it's always perfect timing for these sort of things. So, you, you know, I think it's, yeah, I think people should pay attention to what, you, what really matters and not really worry about fucking... The days of our lives is going on in Parliament. I, I think it's it's basically irrelevant, you know, at, at this point. So, mm. where you know, it's it's yeah, it's more of the same bullshit. Than, you know, it's a lot. Yeah, and uh, speaking about, I was speaking about the 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 the, the, the fact that we're still living under state of emergency. Uh, all all the states and territories in Australia, Victoria. Thankfully, is the only state where where uh, the the legislature has to uh, renew a state of emergency. Uh, in all the other states and territories, the premiers and uh, premiers and chief ministers can just renew their state of emergency uh, indefinitely. Yeah, the Victoria's uh, Victoria's in trouble. I went. I had to go to court today. I uh, I won't be able to say why at the moment. I. Uh, I'll talk about that another week, but I was at court this morning. Uh, me, me and Jimmy, me and Jimmy Hitter were there, and uh, we went to walk in, and the security guard stopped us out the front and said, "Where's your mask?" And I, I said, "You're joking." Mate. I said, "You know, I'm not wearing a mask." And they said, "Oh, you have to wear a mask. You won't go in." I said, "Well, look, I'm not. I'm not wearing a mask. I have an exemption. You, you know, I'm, feel, I'm not wearing one." So it turned into a big thing. They uh, they wouldn't let me in court, so the security guard went into uh, to speak to the you know the, the reception, and I we ended up waiting out the front for a while for. The, for the police to come out and, and they had a bit of a talk to us and and we were just there to adjourn the case for, for today because we need to time to prepare you know our, our defense and and whatnot so uh so we were we were asking for adjournment the police come out and, and we had a discussion and she said to me look unless she goes unless you're going to wear a mask when you come back three weeks i have to be back there she goes unless you're going to wear a mask you're not going to be able to come to court i said well i'm not going to wear a mask you know there's no way so they already know in three weeks that i have to wear a mask yeah, but, they, they, but they've changed the the mask rules again in Victoria that you only need to wear them in high risk settings, which are public transport, rideshare vehicles, in what is it, hospitals and aged care facilities, and in large retail settings. As far as I know, courts aren't included with that. 
Well, the Donga Court was definitely included today. So this chick out front, she nearly chased a couple of people in there that walked past her with no mask while we were talking. She uh, she definitely managed to catch up with them and made sure nobody entered the premises before their mask was tightly equipped. So the fact that I had well, a, I had it, it, you, you should if you if you're back there in a few weeks and because uh, this is the thing the mask rules keep uh, chopping and changing in victoria we're still the only state and territory currently which uh mandates masks in in some some settings because daniel andrews has a a mask fetish uh but you should bring the the mask things and challenge her say so there's nothing about the directions here which say that you have to wear a mask uh, in court well, if they're not going to, have, they're going to deny me to go to court. They're telling me, they, you know, they were, they well, were going to... yeah, you you should push them on it under under what what grounds? I definitely will because I'm pretty sure that there's a law that you're not allowed to bar anybody from a courthouse. I know that you can demand to enter a magistrate courthouse at any, at any time. You know, if it's twelve o'clock at night or one o'clock in the morning, uh, that they, they can have a, a, an on duty um, judge come down. You know, it's it's some fucking law. I don't know. There's a lot of laws, but. I'm sure there'd be something about denying a person the right to front their, their court case. So, you know, I, uh, I'm definitely, yeah, I'll definitely give it a go. I'd like to prolong this as long as I can because I'm planning to go on for, uh, for damages and, and all, all the time anyway. So as long as they want to keep a journey and keep wasting my time, that's great because I'm going to just put in a bill at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's uh, tomorrow evening when Victoria's upper house votes on the state of emergency extension. Dan Andrews wants a nine-month uh, state of emergency extension until December. And uh, we've already seen this year that he's prepared to plunge the state back into a total lockdown, uh, but he doesn't have a majority in the upper house. He's got to get the, the three stooges over the line, Greens leader Samantha Ratnam, the uh, animal justice leader Andy Medic and uh, Fiona Patton, leader of the the Reason Party. I call them the Three Stooges because they voted for his six month extension back in uh, September last year. Yeah, look, I, I think uh, I, th I think Daniel Andrews isn't really doing what he wants. I think Victoria is just a trial place for this particular, uh, you know, this particular whatever you want to call it, facet of the agenda. You know, we're doing the masks and the lockdown. We're other places, places in the world. Well, we were the uh, first. Uh, I, I, I called the it the Melbourne model because even though there were a number of anti-lockdown protests, uh, the, the overwhelming majority of Melbournians and Victorians were totally compliant. And they still are as soon as... Yeah, change, and, and so the rest of the... The rest of the world watch and say, hey, if it works in the city of Melbourne, the state of Victoria, we can roll it in the rest of the world. And that's exactly what they're doing. It, uh, the UK has been in lockdown since December last year, won't fully emerge out of its roadmap out of lockdown until June. Uh, yeah, and, and every, well, not every, but a lot of areas are having different things. So you have the, uh, the vaccine passport rolling out somewhere. I can't remember exactly where it is. You have the... the the uh, social credit scores rolling out in other places. So everywhere's going through different, you, you know, different tests or different facets of this same agenda. You know, I think that, that they're preparing us for something worse and we need to be prepared for something worse to, to eventuate. You, you know, this is just a trial run. Whatever it is, I think it's a trial run. And, and I think because, like, Daniel Andrews definitely isn't just sitting there deciding when to fucking put masks on people. These decisions are well over. Oh, I, th I think he, uh, he, he he probably is. He's He may enjoy it, but I don't think it's his decision. You, you know, he's a fucking, you know, he's a weasel little man with not much spine, and there's, you know, there's bigger things afoot here. So I'd say that he's doing what he's told. You know, otherwise it wouldn't fly. They have all these internal fucking debates to make it look dramatic. It's like watching the fucking WWE. It's, it's all scripted. You know, it's all fucking pre-planned and we're just given what we want to experience. But at the end of the day, we're watching them do this when they're really doing that. So, you, you know, Daniel Andrews is just another fucking mice at the end of the day. His family, we all know his family hasn't been locked down. His family spent the whole time in Queensland.
Well, year. that's what a lot of people speculate. And he was never asked ab about that uh, by the, the mainstream media journos. He was asked by Gabriella Power, oh, there's these uh, rumours circulating that uh, you've been at uh, Melbourne Airport at four in the morning during the stage four lockdown uh, greeting uh, Ch uh, Chinese diplomats arriving uh, in Melbourne without a mask. And he said, no, I haven't been to Melbourne Airport since March this year. I'd be happy to double check my diary to check that's the case. Yeah, well, you'd assume he'd fly out of Essendon anyway, wouldn't he? So he oh. probably, probably hasn't been to Melbourne Airport. He's probably flying out of Essendon in a little private plane. That's what you'd assume. Essendon seems to be the uh, the airport where the, the rich and famous, you know, yeah, do you, I, I, I'm not sure if you if they were up your way, but do you remember during the stage four lockdown there were so many uh, after curfew, so many helicopters and planes around Melbourne. Oh, we got a lot of increased flights straight over the top, but mm. definitely not helicopters. But there was mm. definitely increased traffic. Uh, yeah, just in direct flights. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, one evening I just like walked out the front door to to put uh, a milk milk bottle in the the garbage bin, and I hear this massive like uh, it was either it was either a plane or a helicopter, but it was basically felt like it was right above me, and it's like what this is like late at night in suburban Melbourne, and I open the door and there's there are these planes above me. Oh, you could see them. Well, I could, I, I, I couldn't see them, but I could definitely hear them. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. Well, the sooner you get out of there, the better. I couldn't live in Sydney anymore. I don't know how you fucking do it. Up here, it's so well, beautiful. You know, it, it's great. I, I could not do the hustle. I, I lived in cities most of my life. To go back to that now would be torture. I, I just could not do it. To sit in peak hour traffic, you know, public transport, all the rest of that, even shopping centres. I mean, here they're not too bad. You know, you get some personal space. But fuck me, you people who live in the city, it's a different breed. You need to get you out of there, Tim. It's no good for well, your health. I don't live in the city, but I, I'm in suburbia, yeah. which is obviously yeah. counted in the, oh, the, 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 the metro zone. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the population stats are cutting, starting to come out now. And yeah, people are fleeing Melbourne. Melbourne's going to have a, a dip in, in population because who would want to, who would want to stay here? I bet the Chinese buy it. They'll be, you know, everyone will tell them the Chinese will buy it. That's what seems to happen everywhere. You know, that's what's happening with, with these vaccines. They're giving it to old people. They're going to die and the Chinese are going to buy their land. Mm. It's happening all over the country. Yeah, this was in uh, the papers uh, nearly, a, nearly a month ago. I'll just share it here. Melbournians free, free this, flee the city as COVID hits students and workers. Melbourne... It, it, experienced a 50% collapse in the number of people relocating to the city from other parts of the country during the, the pandemic. New data from the ABS uh, shows a net 7,445 uh, people left Greater Melbourne area during the September quarter, more than three in five of them moving to regional bottle. Regional what? So that, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Bolt hole. The regional bolt hole. Yeah, that's the word that's... that they use. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, not not yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't blame anybody for leaving Melbourne. I would just stay. Well, I, I'm I'm becoming more determined that uh, I need to leave. Yeah, look, it's not it's not a healthy place for anybody to be. Yeah, you know, the amount of people you see, and look, I'm noticing in the in the country more and more there is fucking people that are. Like brain dead, they're just zombies everywhere. They walk around just cooked. They're cooked, you know. They're just fucking scattered. You see them all the time talking to themselves. And me and Jimmy were at the supermarket today, and some some chick rode past on her bike up the coals. Like we walked over, walked over from court, and some chick rode up on her bike, and she stared at us. She rode past. Uh, she rode past. She got on her bike, and she walked past. She growled at us, like literally, like snarled, and then gave us two feet, like just gave us two fingers and mouthed off and walked off. Now we were in court. We went to court, and we went. So we both had our perries on. So we're standing out in front of uh, out in front of Coles and Perry's, and this chick just drive past us and smile, give us two fingers. And maybe, 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 maybe she was a member of the, the Aubrey Wodonga Antifa movement. Definitely not, because we were at the we at the front of court a couple minutes later, and because we'd seen her ride into Coles, and court's just sort of across the street, you know, but it's a good, it's a two-minute walk, and we're sitting out in front of court, we're waiting, and we see her come walking up the street, 
and walking past and she's looking lost but she hasn't got her bike like she actually rode into Coles and left the bike where the trolleys are so she's got in done her shopping walked out walked off left her bike and walked up the course so we seen her pacing around court and looking in the windows of the shops and yeah we uh and then she disappeared so i hope that she uh, i hope that she remembered her bike but you know people uh, this is more and more common you know which is a, which is a worry you know i blame the vaccines to be honest Tim. that's yeah. i i saw that you or oh, you shared with me that you got a message uh, f- uh fr- from some lady who uh who uh, claimed oh the the irony of you uh complaining about doxing because apparently i'm a doxer i oh, know and i heard you killed a dog tim like is that that that's a word on the street well, that is completely untrue, false, and defamatory. And the person that well, acu- is accusing me of that, they better cease and desist of accusing me of such a heinous act. Otherwise, they'll uh, receive some legal documents. Yeah, well, Senator Slayer, you hear that? Stop saying that Tim killed dogs. It's not nice. I so. love dogs. Dogs are the... <laughs> They're the the most pleasant one of the most pleasant creatures uh, in the world. I, I would yeah. I would I, I would much rather us for the past year be governed by dogs uh, than our political leaders. Well, that's they probably got just as many brains, you know. But uh, I'd like to uh, that that was a I'd like to just shout out to Scotty's balls too. Um, that was the reply I gave. They asked for a comment for a story regarding Tim and his his gang of dog killers. Uh, the only reply they got was a set of testicles. So, um, yeah. Anyone else who wants any more comments, just just hit me up on uh, on Telegram and uh, and I'll I'll send you back some testicles. And it's also false and defamatory that I dox them. All I all I did was state what their name was, which is not doxing somebody. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I know the name's Anxious Aussie. I think that's a, that's the only name I got. Well, that, well, that, well, well that's her. That, that, that's a YouTube channel name. I, I called her by a proper name, which is Katrina Bailey, and she claimed that I doxed her. No, oh, Katrina, grow up, grow up. Tim did hey, hey. dog Katrina. Relax. She does say she's had some evidence coming out in a few days, but so that'll be interesting. I like when uh, I like when crazy people release evidence that makes no sense. When we're uh, she, she, she's been going after your mate as well, Nick Patterson, uh, doing a few exposés on him. Oh, what did Nick do to her? Nick did nothing uh, because, yeah, Anxious Aussie uh, supports the, the lockdowns and think that COVID's super deadly and that uh, uh, we must all be either, like, stupid or globalist actors. She, in fact, uh, uh, blamed our, uh, our activism and uh, YouTube videos for... Uh, uh, allowing Dan Andrews to continue his lockdown. So, uh, so, so apparently we're puppets for Dan Andrews, according to her. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's always, there's always a crazy out there. Yeah. We met this, we, we, we were, when we were away at Nimbin last time, me and my wife uh, sat there and had a conversation with a fascinating woman who, uh, who tried to, uh, she tried to tell us about uh, this sex trafficking cult that she had uncovered. Of course, it's got a furious wheel like, fuck, because she was freaking, she's like, I'm here hiding, they're going to kill me. But right, right, we're like, oh, fuck, how can we help you? you? You know, is there something we can do? And then she started telling us how to find their headquarters, and it was all uh, it was all numerically aligned with the numbers and of the of the streets in the fucking mountains with the, with the, it just turned into complete craziness. After about 40 minutes of listening to her, me and my wife were just spinning out, you know, and it's coming, she was breaking down people's name, like, uh, the mass made no sense. The you know the basis of the story fluctuated so much. The finger went from you know person to person. But you know we must admit it wasn't in, but we did have fun listening to it. It was it was entertaining. You know the world's full of them. We were full. Yeah. We found another one for that. Like, like 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 there is like it's legitimately true that there are uh, child sex trafficking rings oh, in yeah. West Western countries, uh, some yeah. involving high profile people, but the people who claim that there's uh, underground tunnels in, in Melbourne for child trafficking and all that sort of stuff. Like that is obviously <laughs> absurd. It just went deeper than that. Like I won't go right into it because it, it's, it would take a long time, but it definitely went creepier than that. It was, she was off. She was off. She was telling us how the night before, I can't remember her name, Hi, if you ever see this, love ya. 
great conversation. She was telling us uh, the night before she had invited a, a bloke. She, she was an older woman, she was about 55, something like that, and she had met a bloke at the caravan park and she would invited him around for dinner. And apparently while she was talking, he had got up and just put his knife and fork down and walked out and left his plate there. So I don't know what she was saying to him, but the, the man literally just left his meal half eaten and walked out without saying a word. So, mm. yeah, she was uh, – But then, then, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, apparently another uh, theory is is that uh, pedophiles wear red shoes. That, that's a, that, that's their like secret calling code. And the, this is the like absurd thing. If you're like a a pedophile, then why would you make make yourself identifiable by wearing red shoes? Uh, I know a few people with red shoes, Tim. That's a, that's a concern. I'm going to fucking start asking. I've got kids, man. I'm going to have to start asking some questions now. Red shoes are out. <laughs> uh, I don't put on the spot, but I think I know someone with red shoes. <laughs> so, uh, so red shoes, they're not exactly, like, common. Like, that's the thing. You may no. wear... Yeah, tell you what's even less common, red slides. You don't see them much. Sorry? Red slides, you know the slides with no, you know, if you see red slides, be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What's that? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just know a man who has some red slides. And I was, I was when I seen him buy them, I was a bit bit concerned, but now that's, that's given me some more information, so I'll look further into that. <laughs> what else have we got here? Oh, yeah. Um we were talking about uh, a few weeks back how uh, the, the the Chinese where they will they go birth to the virus uh, because uh, they've been having such trouble with the the, the PCR tests because uh, what is that people test negative negative then positive then negative again and so China uh, their apparent well game changer was that not only would it go up the nose into the brain down the throat but also uh, up your a bum as well and <laughs> yeah and uh, they uh, they even uh, perform these anal swabs on on u.s diplomats uh, the chinese government gave biden administration officials anal covid swab tests upon arriving in china the chinese government says the anal swabs were given to u.s diplomats in error the Chinese government has promised to stop using anal swabs on American diplomats to test for COVID after Washington complained that practice was undignified, the U.S. State Department said. The State Department never agreed to this kind of testing and protested directly to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where we learned that some staff were subjected to it. Now, what kind of weak administration? Because, like, they, like, they these officials, they complied with it, and like, like uh, it complied with it. Uh, it was only after the fact that uh, there was some uh, diplomatic talk. Like, if you were wanting to show that you're a a strong nation that uh, looks it looks after its people, there's no way that you'd allow them to uh, be subjected to that. But they did say, didn't it say once they entered China, they got to China and then they were subjected to it. Yeah, but the the US yeah, uh, the, say, Biden, the, say, the, the Biden I administration should happened. have been should should have put a stop to it immediately. It should never have happened. Did they even know till after it? Them Chinese are pretty rough. I seen some of them. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally the the Chinese ass raped the Biden administration. Yeah, basically, that's just a way of demoralizing America. That's all that is. That's a big fuck you to America. And the Chinese like afterwards, oh, sorry, it was an uh, uh, error, our mistake. We just uh, accidentally yeah. <laughs> violated that's, your uh, uh, your diplomats. That's exactly, that, that's what they're doing to the whole country. That's what they're doing to the West. You know, And <laughs> whether they let them or not, I don't think they have much choice. Once you're in China, you're going to do what them motherfuckers say. You, you know, they're going to come out and just bend you over. I had some, some friends that, uh, you know, well, uh, one mate in particular used to tell me he was a Vietnam vet and he used to tell me uh, stories about the some of the, the um, you know, some of the things that happened. And, and Japanese were the worst, like the worst, you know, they were the most cruel when they, when they had prisoners. Oh, during war. World War II, yeah. Yeah, but uh, apparently the uh, the Japanese had nothing on the Chinese. So the Japanese were, were scared of, 
of the Chinese, apparently, so in, in these prisoner of war camps, and they were told about these Japanese torture tactics and stuff like uh, the Chinese torture tactics and stuff. So I assume that uh, that if they they tell you to bend over, you're going to bend over, basically. And uh, now I'm putting, uh, keep putting the the entropy link in the the live chat. Entropy is the the YouTube and DLive enhanced software uh, where you can uh, ask us a question or send through a super chat to uh, support the production of the show. So we're making pretty good time tonight. We're only uh, we've only been going for an hour, so got plenty of time for audience interaction i saw that the audience didn't like what i what, what i had to had to say about uh, to, uh tom sewell's actions but i gotta say things how i how i see it yeah well mate you can't make everyone happy i suppose well what were they saying go okay, give me what's going on in the, in the audience I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go further up here yeah. but yes the If I go further up here. I spoke to Tom for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, you, you know, we, we have uh, very different views on a, on, a, on a lot of things, but he he seemed like a nice dude, man. He, uh, you know, he contacted me and, and like I said, I'm happy to talk to anybody. You know, I've said that multiple times on here, regardless of politics. You're or, even willing to talk to Antifa. I, I, actually, I actually want to talk to Antifa, I, you know. I'm waiting for them to uh, take me up on my offer and come on the podcast. Or, you know, I still extend that every week. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, Tom was, uh, he was he was a smart dude. He sounded very calculated. I don't know how calculated that was today, but, um, yeah, he, uh, he sounded all right when I talked to him. Might reach out to him and see if he's all right. <laughs> or maybe not, because I think his uh, devices might be seized soon. True. Yeah, that's that is true. Yeah, I'm sure he'll get it back. I wonder. Oh, well, did, so that just happened tonight. No one's heard if he's been arrested or charged or anything. Like well, that. it's a it's a breaking, developing story, as they say. Uh, but a, a when your phone is confiscated uh, by uh, police, uh, by police, uh, you uh, there, there's no guarantee that you'll you'll get it back. Uh, You'll get it back anytime soon. It depends. Uh, what, it depends what it's taken for. Uh, you, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. And it depends well, on what right. remember uh, Zoe Bueller? She was the the Ballarat mother who was who was charged and handcuffed uh, for incitement in the lead up to the September five pr uh, protests. Uh, she's going to to fight the charge. Yeah. Uh, a court hearing last month was told Miss Bueller, 28, was keen to finalise her case before she was due to give birth to a third child in April and that a resolution could have involved her admitting wrongdoing in exchange for being spared a criminal record. But Defence Counsel Hugo Moody told Ballarat Magistrates Court his client is now wanted to contest the charge in a hearing before the magistrate. This matter has not been resolved and Miss Bueller attends to energetically fight the charge against her. Her arrest on September 2 when she was handcuffed in her pyjamas with a partner uh, sparked concern among lawyers and civil liberties group at the actions of the police were heavy-handed. And remember at the time that Luke Cornelius, Chief Wiggum, defended all the police actions. Police command said it was satisfied the way officers treated Miss Bueller was appropriate. She's on bail, is due to face a contest mention on March 26. Uh, the substantial hearing is likely to be held after Miss Bueller gives birth. Uh, and Mr. Moody called on police to return his client's mobile phone, so she still hasn't got it back, which was seized during her arrest. He said that there was no dispute she used the phone to make a Facebook post, but that Miss Bueller could not afford a new one as, a, as she lost her job during lockdown. L uh, the lawyer said police could download the phone's contents and return it as keeping the device seems punitive. Police prosecutor said the phone was still required as part of the investigation and might be returned, but not at this point. So there you go. Yeah, she, she needs to get herself a new lawyer. I bet, like, she's, got, I bet she's using legal aid. No, sure. no, she she's uh, uh, she's crowdfunded a lot of well, people crowdfunded legal fees on her behalf, so she has got decent a uh, decent representation. Uh, there you go. That's yeah. Well, no point reaching out to Tom then, is it? 
Yeah, and like they, thankfully, her like her, her, her unborn child is still alive because the stress of it all could have uh, could have caused a like a another pregnant woman to have a miscarriage. And if the coronavirus lockdown restrictions are supposed to be about human life. What so uh, it's okay to sacrifice an unborn child uh, if it means stressing out a mother because she uh, wanted to organise an anti-lockdown protest? Yeah, look, it's a, a, Tim, the whole stressing out thing. Of course, the baby's fine. She's just toughen up. You, you know, too many victims. She should be right. You, you know, she's fucking. Why are you stressful? Just relax. It's everyone should be happy. Too many oh, people. She... Too many. It's too much of a victim mentality. You, you know, like. I don't like it. Well, well, not not everyone is as 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 strong as as you as you and I. Uh, the... Not many people are. Too. That's the problem. There is no resilience left in society. One of the biggest problems we face with kids uh, training kids and stuff is that one of the biggest problems we have running businesses and myself and and others on you know others that I associate with is finding staff that are resilient that that can stick with you know through basically anything, you know, resilience is, is gone from society and it needs to be installed in kids again. So, you know, when you see this victim mentality, that's all it is. It's all a copy. I, you know, not many people are strong anymore. Too. It's when we were younger, you were, you looked up to strength. That was something that you glorified. Now you look oh, yeah. to yeah, I, 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 uh, Definitely strength, emotional strength is something to aspire to. Uh, but I'm just stating the reality that, today especially people who well this this would be like her, her first interaction ever with 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 uh, law enforcement i it, it would be shocking for somebody like her i am just sort of saying that uh, things could like the, obviously there there are a lot of lot of other factors at play here oh 100% but you, you know yeah, I, we still need to, you know, people, we, we need to get people to be more resilient. We need to encourage people to be more resilient. This, you know, fuck her, whinging. She'll be fine. I don't know why people are locking down. They're like, don't lock down. If everyone's depressed about their lockdowns, don't lock down. Don't wear a mask. Don't do what you're told to do. You'll be surprised how much better you feel about yourself when you grow a little bit of spine. Just a little bit of spine and you'll feel much better. So just say no. You know what happened to the old fucking Nancy Reagan? Just say no. Just say no. No, I'm not. Well, that, no. that wasn't. She she said no in regard to don't take drugs. I don't know where... why she said no, kids. That's what. See, I say yes, and then no to the lockdowns. No. <laughs> yeah, no. because um, uh, ba based on your own admission, uh, when it comes to uh, certain types of drugs, you just don't say no. Oh, uh, no, sometimes I say no. <laughs> no, no. I don't always say yes. Yeah. But look, <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, people should be allowed to do what they want and whatever they enjoy doing, they should be allowed to enjoy doing. I think alcohol is one of the worst drugs out there. I don't do alcohol, you know. I, I may partake in some others, you know. I, I, I think, you know, obviously cannabis has a part of society. I also think a lot of psychedelics should have a, a strong part of society. I think they have they have uses, you know. Um, maybe not for always just partying and getting off your head, but there's medicinal uses to all these things that should be explored, you know, ketamine and, and all these things that have you know, there's ketamine therapy in America now where people actually go get high for like 48 hours. They just jack them up with all this ketamine. Then they come back on their come down and talk through their issues. And, it, you know, they're finding that, that soldiers with PTSD and that are getting great results from this sort of therapy. So I don't see anything wrong with that. You, you know, the fact that people classify drug addicts or drug users as drug addicts, it's bullshit. You know, if, if someone wants to get high, get high. If they don't hurt people, what's the problem? You know, if you start hurting other people's, uh, other people, of course, things become an issue. The, one of the major things with that is obviously alcohol. You, you know, meth is, you know, meth has issues, heroin has issues, but, you, you know, there are a lot of drugs that, you know, are more mild and, you know, people shouldn't get fucking five-year sentences for, you know, partaking in them. So. There's a... A question here on Entropy from Savage Nobles and Merry Peasants. He says, what the fuck is written on the top of your eye, mate? He's talking about your tattoo. I thought it was talking about yours. No, that's his family. Uh, I, I just um, have, what is that, out of control eyebrows at the moment and hair at the moment. I need to go back to the 
Oh, the the barbers, I think, maybe this week. Get another trim. Hey, have you seen? I had on, I had on Wilms front uh, last Wednesday night as uh, uh, my guest uh, returning Joel Jamal, who's famous for his uh, groomed eyebrows. Yeah, I, I don't know who that is, but yeah. Oh, well, hey, wait, what, what, watch the episode or just watch part of it and you'll know what I'm talking about. Check out the eyebrows? Sorry? Check out the eyebrows, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, check out his eyebrows. Make sure I do. Jamal, Jamal's eyebrows. Joel Jamal. Remind me. <laughs> All right, Kate will remind me. Yeah, so what's, well, yeah, what's, what's on your eye? Family. It says family. You don't have a ultra HD camera that can <laughs> see, it, see it clearly. No, it's not clear enough. It looks clear on my screen. It's still wrinkles. All the wrinkles are. <laughs> my wife should stop frowning. If I squint, maybe you can read it better. <laughs> it's been there for a long time. I have tattoos everywhere, so I forget what most of them say. Any other questions, Tim? Any more like more relevant questions? That was like shit. A, a savage noble and merry peasants has also commented. Some sometimes I say no touches nose. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Let, I say no. Yeah. yeah. Let's go over. Man, I'm saying no a lot. Let's go over to the, the US for the final section of the, the show. Uh, Biden decided to, to, uh, to do some more, more bombing of Syria because that place just ha hasn't been uh, bo uh, bombed enough. Yeah, Biden's definitely, uh, definitely not making any friends at the moment, is he? Well, he, he's part of the, uh, the Washington neocon establishment the who make sure they they placate the 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 globalists and the military industrial complex and uh, of course a lot of the 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 democrat base and the the progressive socialists they're anti-war but because biden is not donald trump is and is their guy they're not exactly out on the streets uh, decrying war crimes Nah, look, I, I must admit that I, I really enjoy watching Biden's dementia set in. Like, some of the videos that he makes are absolutely classic. Mm. Uh, like, the news edits out so much because, you, you know, Trump was a funny president, but when you actually watch Biden's full speech, this motherfucker's really funny, man. Like, he, he's wild shit. Like, he just... And then he comes back to sentence. It makes no sense. It's completely incoherent. But the news let him get away with it. It's fantastic. Like, I really enjoy it. Have you watched any of his uh, press secretary, Jen Psaki, uh, in action, answering reporters' questions where she uh, says, I'll have to circle back to you. And she was asked something about uh, the, 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 the game, game, uh, game st uh, stock st uh, stomp. And she's like, I'll have to circle back on you, but we have a female running the, the treasury at the moment, uh, uh, obviously bringing a fresh new new set of perspective. And so that's the new joke that I don't know, but we've got such a diverse administration. Yeah, well... Yeah. So, so people have been joking, maybe the, the bombs were dropped by a, a non-binary uh, uh, pilots of colour. <laughs> Yeah. What's your, hey, what's your view on cryptocurrency, Tim? Do you invest in cryptocurrency? I don't, uh, but I, I certainly uh, don't uh, uh, don't begrudge the people who do at all. It's turned out to be a very good investment, but it's a it's a well, whole uh, it's a whole a uh, you you would say a technical profession in itself. It's it's much more complicated that uh, I've. Uh, one yeah, of the, sure. It's not complicated to buy. It's yeah. yeah. It's, one, yeah. one of the yeah. uh, one of the guests I've had on Wilms Front, uh, uh, Stefan Livara. He has a whole podcast dedicated to, to Bitcoin. Yeah, but I, was saying, well, I, have, I have a good friend of mine who made a lot of money from it a lot of years ago, and he he started to advise years ago on what to invest in, and I followed his advice and and done yeah very well. But yeah, it's good. It's yeah, referred to as digital gold. Yeah, well, look, Chainlink's one that I, that's, I can't remember how much it is now. I started buying that at 40 cents, like, 
uh, yeah, a long time ago and, and stocking that up. And there's, there's others. It's a, you know, still a lot of money to be made there, I think. Uh, Safex. You buy anything? Buy Safex. Find that. Oh, it's because uh, central, central, central banks to, to fund all of the uh, coronavirus debt are just printing more money, which means that your paper central bank issued money is worth less, which means that gold, silver and uh, digital cryptocurrencies, because they're, uh, they're, they're stable, are uh, going to increase astronomically in value. Yeah, well, they're going to collapse the economy. That's just a matter of time. It's obviously going to happen in the West, I believe, anyway. So, yeah, cryptocurrency is definitely a, a, you know, a viable option. But then again, that we see what happened in Texas. So if they shut down the internet or, or so, you know, then maybe not. You, you know, I think you have to hedge your bets, don't you? Silver, that's the way to go. Yeah, if you're if you're old school like uh, Ron Paul, then nothing wrong with uh, go, uh, investing in gold and silver. Yeah, well, if everything goes to shit, it won't matter anyway. We'll just run around eating people up for food. It'll be easy. You come with us. The Borderland chapter will be right, mate. We'll be we'll be we'll be well fed. And uh, Donald Trump made his first major speech post the presidency, speaking at uh, CPAC in Orlando, Florida. It was held in Florida because Florida is 100% open. There are no uh, coronavirus uh, capacity restrictions at all, but still a lot of uh, people wear masks around the state. So even at, uh, C at the CPAC conference, uh, there were still some attendees wearing masks. And I'm sort of like, if you're at a CPAC conference, which is basically a Trump conference, and you're wearing a mask, you're a cuck. Yeah. There's and in Florida, people, of all places. People will never learn. You know, there's no way to help them. You know. Yeah, what so you Trump, yeah, Trump made, well, a what you would say is a, a signature Trumpian speech where he spoke off the cuff, not on teleprompter, talking about his achievements and... Uh, the 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 fact that how did I get so many votes and still not win? Yeah, it's same old bullshit with Trump, isn't it? He's, you know, I think his day's over. The great, the great. Score, it, it's there. clear that he's going to toy uh, with uh, the uh, the public and the media for the next uh, three years about if he's going to run for president again. This well, is. He'll make a lot of money doing so too, I assume. You know, business will go through the roof. And look, he probably has... Oh, well, he's been deplatformed by, like, so many corporations now. Who can he do business with? And then the Attorney General of uh, New York is going after the, the Trump organisation. Yeah, well, good luck with that. I think they'd be pretty well protected. We'll see. It'd be interesting. I think now he'll have more sway than... You know, that's what they'll be concerned about. He'll have more sway now he's not in politics. He, he's got the freedom to uh, to speak more. Like, oh, he's, lost his, he's lost his Twitter account. I was going to say whether he, he, you know, whether he has a platform to do so or not. But, the uh, you know, the information that, that he can now share and the restrictions on his speech will be less. Mm. But if, if he makes the most yeah. of that, we'll see. You know, I, yeah. I was waiting for him to, uh, to classify aliens or something like that. He never done that, so yeah, and he, he never, and he, and he didn't uh, pardon Julian Assange or Edward Snowden. No, but he pardoned all them fucking Jewish gangsters from that Kushner family, and yeah, a whole bunch of other uh, criminals as well. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, what, what do you think that uh, Trump now he ends his speeches uh, with his signature song, which is uh, YMCA by the the Village People? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, well, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's his it's his favorite song, and so his the speech at CPAC concluded with YMCA. And you pardon? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. It's no, it's uh, serious. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not sure about you, but like uh, YMCA, like uh, I've known that song for as long as I live because what is it? All the, what is it? Uh, Blue Light Discos at school played that song and so did the police bands when they, they came to perform at our school. Look, it's a good song, but, you know, I definitely wouldn't put it up 
with my favorites. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, like sort of has like a presidential lyrics. You can, uh, you can have a good meal. You can get yourself clean. You can hang out with all the boys. It's well, not yeah, exactly no, presidential yeah. lyrics. No, it's uh, yeah. I just uh, I don't know what to say, man. I'm shocked. I thought you were joking. No. It, it, it sounds like uh, um, a, and you know a, a clubhouse at the the, the Borderlands chapter. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't sing that song, that's for sure. Mm. <sighs> and also, the what is it the 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 song that what is it Donald Junior and uh, his girlfriend Kim Lee Guilford were were dancing to on January six was was Gloria. You know that song. From the eighties. Nah, refresh me. Just sing the chorus. Gloria, Gloria. They figured out your alias. Here you go. Here you go. Good morning. No, no, more. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna oh. sing too much. No, no, no. Um, I thought I had you. Yeah, I know the song, man. Yeah, I know the song. Why well, were you just saying if you could get me singing? Yeah. Well, we got you there a little bit. No. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's never run in my family. The, uh, the voice. The well, well, some might disagree. You never know if you don't try. It's the only one way to find out. It, it, you just have to be confident. Anything comes with confidence. You can do anything you want to do. You know, if you put your mind to it, Tim, I have faith that you can sing. <laughs> uh, it's, it, you haven't inspired me to take it up. No, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll keep working on that. Yeah. All right, we're getting to about 10, hey? I'm fucking starving, man. I've had such a big day. I am so tired. I've been at it all day. So, 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 so have I. It's been, yeah, it's been a hectic day. And, well, we had that uh, developing story in the in, in the early evening. And uh, there's a, obviously we'll play it over the next few days. Uh, I'm back uh, tomorrow night for, for Tread Tasman Talk, uh, 7 p.m. Melbourne time back on the Unshackled YouTube channel. I am my mate, Dewey DeBoer, in Auckland. He's locked down again. Uh, Jacinta Ardern on late on Saturday evening announced that from Sunday it's going to be another five-day lockdown because we thought we had this high school cluster under control, but we don't. And so oh. they're, they're in lockdown number four. Before we go, I'm starting a, a new podcast Friday night called Hard Knocks. Uh, Senator Slayer will be on the first podcast with me, so it's going to be Friday night, 8.30. Um, so there's a story I didn't tell tonight. So on Thursday afternoon, I was actually uh, actually attacked. I was attacked by somebody um, very violently. So tune in Friday night if you want to hear that story. Great story. Didn't end well for him. But tune in. I didn't want to tell it tonight, you know, in, in spite of, of Tom, and I didn't want to take away from uh, from what he'd done. That was, a, it was done. A, a road rage incident. It was a road rage incident. Uh, his road rage more than mine. Uh, I may have upset him at the start. Um, he then decided to chase me. Uh, and a, a, a struggle ensued. So tune in Friday if you want the uh, full story. Yeah. And there's a, there's going to be plenty of yarns on hard knocks. Mate, I'll tell you, he was a tough man. I fought some tough men, but he was a tough man. I feel like we should be friends, and I, uh, I want to put an invite out to him. If he ever sees this, respect, mate. You took a beating like a man. <laughs> So Friday night, I'll let you know. Yeah. And uh, on Wilmsfront Wednesday, uh, 8.30 p.m. Melbourne time on the Wilmsfront YouTube channel, I've got as my guest uh, Sanjeev Sablok. Uh, you would have seen him. Uh, he was the Indian fellow who who gave a speech outside of Greg Hunt's office during the, the Saturday protest. So he's written, or he, he you, would call, you could call him a bit of a whistleblower because he was actually a Victorian government public servant uh, at the beginning of 2020 in the Department of Treasury and Finance, but resigned in September over their lockdown lunacy policy. And he's now written a book, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Broken State. Ah, good so, on him. Yeah, very much looking forward to uh, talking with him because it's like, it's pretty gutsy for somebody to give up the comfort of a public service job on on principle and well to to speak out against your your very powerful former employer. Yeah, no, good man, Sanjeev, well done, respect. And uh, of course, I'm on Dusty Bogan's Thirsty Thursday, and now you've got a Friday Friday night fix. Now we're with your. What time does your start? Ah, uh, Friday, eight thirty. Melbourne time or Victorian time? 
Friday. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, I'll be tuning in because I don't have uh, any 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 shows of my own on Friday night, so I'll kick kick back and I don't. I will. I can just enjoy a show rather than having to worry about produce one. Make sure that well, yeah. Make, make, make sure that your, uh, your, your your stream is fixed so whenever a video is played, you don't disappear. Don't worry. That was always, that was always awkward booked. when I came back came, came, came back by myself. Yeah, well, I'll be uh, I'll be sure to uh, talk to you in the in the days ensuing because I uh, I need to get some advice on how to uh, to be as skillful as you. So uh, you know, I have no technically, idea. Technically, to technically skillful. Yeah, yeah, technically. Well, I, I could help you. I, I, I could help you out with uh, the other things, such as all the information that I have. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll keep that Monday. More than once a week might be too much for my brain to handle. Friday, we're just going to talk shit. So I'm going to uh, we're going to play some fights and uh, and and, uh, and go over some fights and, and just generally have a bit of a laugh. So this week, me and Senator Slay will be on. Some weeks we're going to be streaming from the gym. You mean uh, you mean Neil Erickson? Uh, I see by you. His real the name. I, I, I've doxed him. Ah, uh, the one and only Neil Erickson. So yeah, he, uh, he will be. Uh, help, help, yeah, he will be joining me Friday night. And yeah, a lot of weeks we'll have. Uh, we'll be having sparring matches and stuff as well. So Jimmy Hitter's going to be fighting the next few weeks. I don't know who I used to see wrestling throwing under the bus, but okay, Jimmy can, can, can fight can on consen- consensual fights, not like the one we saw earlier. Yeah, I oh, know. Definitely consensual. Definitely consensual. Well, maybe not for Jimmy. He's got no choice, but. <laughs> Anybody who wants to fight Jimmy, they're, they're more than welcome. Why me? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tim. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I will see you next week, right. and I'll see you all tomorrow night. All right. Cheers, mate. Thank you.